Now let's bring you over to the pond and basically, um, I don't know, it was last year or two years ago, I put my first Azola into the pond and that was a complete disaster. It always ends up in the neighbor's pond, which is the pond about a kilometer down below, down below the actual small stream. And so I was thinking to myself, and I have tried it several times, and it has never ever worked for me. So I was thinking, how can I actually make this work, um, but using maybe something bigger is what I thought. So I got a bucket of this stuff. <laughs> and now finally, about four months ago, I just put a bucket in over there somewhere, and it just grew and grew and grew and grew. Let me just show you what it actually looks like. This is our bridge. I mustn't fall in, especially. I'm borrowing somebody else's camera at the moment. My camera is in the repair, and I'm not sure if I can actually fix it. So, this is what it is. If anybody knows what it is, um, I still haven't looked it up. I have searched on the internet, but I, I, I'm not entirely sure. So, it's some kind of pondweed. Definitely has to form some kind of symbiosis with uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria, otherwise, it wouldn't really grow without the nitrogen so well, especially on the water. So, now why would you do this? Of course, it's an amazing free fertilizer. You have, as I said in the last video, you have the potential to use all of that as a mulch, which I'll show you now in a minute. We have been using that as a mulch. Um, also, the other thing is, it's really great because if you have some kind of runoff, so if your soil is leaching nutrients, then the first place it's going to go to is going to be in your, in your, water, so in your water. And then eventually, if you don't catch it, it will end up in the actual ocean. And what a real waste of nutrients when you can actually catch them with something like this. And having mentioned the whole nitrogen fixing thing, you can actually let like use a space like that to catch vast amounts of uh, plants that are rich in nitrogen. Nitrogen being one of the um, nutrients that plants need a lot of in order to build their uh, the cell wall, the cells, uh, I'm sorry, the cells so plants can grow. So let me just take you over to the actual place where we're mulching. Now there are different like mulching is generally done in order to prevent soil erosion. Soil erosion is the biggest threat that we face at the moment. Uh, we humans have, basically we have a certain amount of agricultural land, um, about two hectares per person at the moment. Now nearly all of that we're pretty much destroying really fast to what is called soil erosion. Uh, so an actual thing. And what it means is we have little puppies digging yeah, you. Little puppies digging and destroying the soil. Except those little puppies are actually <laughs> large tractors, machines that really dig the soil. And they're actually turning the soil from the top horizon to the bottom horizon. Now, when, when you do that, it actually kills all the life that lives in the top, like uh, 5 to 10 centimeters. Even deeper down, there's, there's more. But most of it is actually in the top horizon, like a huge amount of of uh, soil life there. Now this soil life is really responsible for making certain nutrients, most of the nutrients actually, um, most of these nutrients actually are, are needed in smaller quantities by the way. But a lot of the minerals and things like that are made available to plants uh, by these, by this life in the soil. So you have bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, all that kind of stuff. When you actually when you when you are rototilling the soil, you've killed the bacteria, uh, the fungi like that, like right away, and bringing them back takes a long time. So you have to also kind of figure that kind of thing out. And those fungi, as you're holding on to bigger soil particles or especially organic matter in your soil, uh, really well. So these things are important. That stuff in the, the soil, that life is important. And if we keep destroying it, we're going to get soil erosion. Soil erosion means then less nutrients in our soil. It means that the topsoil layer is going down, 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 down every, every year. They estimate that when you're growing sweet corn, for instance, it can drop that much every year. That's a ton of, that's a ton of, tons of uh, soil being lost into the ocean. 
So those are, those are the figures, you know, and something we have to really think about. Now, um, if you're putting chemical fertilizer on it, the first thing you've done is you've killed, again, all that life in the soil. And they're chemical heads. These chemical farmers and the industry and agricultural industry, they will tell you that there is always a minus in nature. That's complete nuts. Like, look at forests, man. They, nobody has ever sprayed. Nobody's given that chemical fertilizer or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> and the reason for that is because the soil will rejuvenile uh, itself. Juvenile? Ju oh, I can't never say that word. The soil will actually revitalize itself and refeed itself those bacteria all those those that life in that soil is going to eat away at the actual soil itself and start making that into a bioavailable form for the plants it's going to make it into a a uh, water soluble nutrient form that plants can actually ingest and if you kill those bacteria those fungi those nematodes those protozoa if you kill them by putting on chemicals by digging it like in a huge way I'm not just talking once digging, I'm talking like really going for it with heavy, heavy machinery. You're going to destroy that life really pretty good, pretty fast, and then you're going to have a lack. And then what, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have to put some chemical fertilizer on there, and then your soil, your plants seem to be for a while dependent on chemical fertilizers. And I wonder sometimes, did those chemical fertilizer guys you know, those guys are selling it. Did they do that on purpose? Make it a salt-based fertilizer so it kills all the bacteria and everything. So, um, probably yes is the answer. But we have no proof. But it's weird that it's, it's connected so well. It's uh, in the favor of the chemical in industry to sell a product that, that kills out the competition, <laughs> the natural competition. They're buggers, really. Um, so that's what we want to avoid. Now, some countries you will have really heavy clay and really, really slow metabolism. Like those microbes won't be growing that fast because you have a cool climate, heavy, heavy clay. You're going to have to dig somewhat and then you have to uh, use a fork to loosen it um, every year at least once. And that's, uh, you can get away with then doing some mulches and then you are actually building the soil. And most importantly, it is said that you're going to get twice as much nutrients in an organically grown food than in a non-organically grown food. And that really means and really proves that growing food on soil like that is going to like, you know, it's just going to produce a lot more nutrients for yourself. So you're going to get twice as many nutrients. And like American, I'm sorry to you Americans, and I'm, I am ranting on here now a bit, but you know, it's the overfed but undernourished nation in the world. And there's a reason for that, you know, because they're applying tons and tons of that kind of industry. If you're eating that kind of, if you're eating healthily, like healthy salads and all that kind of stuff, organic matter, you're going to be pretty thin, but you're going to have a lot of nutrients in you. Um, other than that, um, sandy soils definitely do not dig it. You don't have to. It's very the the particles are quite big, and all you got to really do is put some mulch on it. That's what we're doing here. We're trying, but the puppies and dogs keep running over it, <laughs> like there is no tomorrow. They're having a lot of fun. Um, so this stuff is actually really really good as a as an extra bit of mulch that you could be growing to protect your soil. And we can grow a ton of food on this little small area. You could feed nearly a family on this if you were really, really going for it, you know? If you are, we're just doing seed saving. Everything we grow is for seeds. But if you really wanted to, you could actually grow some fruit trees here and then you could start growing lots of um, food continuously right next to each other and get a lot of food into a small space like that. I'll leave you with this one now. Because 95% of the nutrients that plants actually require actually do not even do not even come from the soil. You know, you you have nitrogen, you have um, you have water, you have oxygen. All those components are really important to building. You have the sunlight. All those imp important to building the actual plants themselves. The five percent are all the minerals and some of the other nutrients as well. But those are all made. Like, the plants don't need many of those. They're all made in the actual soil by uh, bacteria and fungi and then protozoa and so on. And you can actually grow a soil 
like the soil can actually start flourishing again because those microbes will be chewing away <laughs> pretty much at the actual soil itself and if there is a lot of there a lot of soil there like for the bedrock they'll be using that um, you can actually within like a few months get those nutrients back into the soil so actually there is no lack that's only if you killed the life that is responsible for making those nutrients available makes sense yeah i'll leave you with that video hope you enjoyed it and yeah hope to see you in the next one too